Hello everyone, this is Alberto, grad student at the Buckler Lab, and this is video 2 of uh, data filtering using Tassel. Um, this part will cover the actual filter options that are available. In the previous video we talked about uh, how to look at the data and decide which parameters you're going to use for filtering. So here we're going to be going directly hands-on to filtering. So we're going to start by filter, these are the different options. And let's start with sites, this is for the genotypic data. So under sites, you have a minimum count, which basically tells you how many uh, how many individuals must have a allele call in order for the site to be retained. So in other words, it's sort of like what proportion missing are you going to allow? So let's say you know your technology should allow you to have over 95% call. So you would say of the 281, maybe roughly 267 should have a call and otherwise it may be indicative of something wrong, so you can use that parameter. Uh, you can also use filtering based on minimum frequency, and this is important for downstream analysis if, if uh, very low frequency polymorphisms are going to have an impact uh, bias or uh, uh, false positive associations, which I'm going to talk about in GWAS, then you want to use that uh, here and also uh, maximum frequency can also be used depending on your population. If you have a biprint and you know what frequency should be the lowest and the highest, you can use those values and input them here. You can also uh, filter based on position index. Um, this option remove minor SNP states means that if you have, let's say, A and T uh, as major and minor allele, and then you have a third allele, a C allele, that is in a few individuals, uh, that value is going to be changed to missing and this can help you get rid of things like sequencing errors and you can also generate haplotypes via a, slide, a sliding window and you decide the length and the step length and another option here is that you can select chromosomes which chromosomes you want to uh, keep and uh, select those and then you click on filter and then this filtering criteria will be uh, applied to your data set and uh, going back to filter, some additional options is the by site names. So as I mentioned uh, previously in the last video, you may notice that one particular site has too much missing data or too much too high heterozygosity. So then you write that down and then you just input that here. Uh, let's say we decided that this uh, site was suspicious, and then we click in add. And then we can capture unselected, which means that all these sites that are not this one are going to be captured. Or maybe this site in particular is of interest to you. So you can just capture that, capture selected, and uh, that's going to let you do that uh, subset. Remove uh, will remove this uh, the selection from this value. So if we click remove, it's going to remove that site, and then we are going to capture everything uh, and basically, uh, when we filter based on taxonyms, it works very similar. And one of the important things that I want to mention is that uh, this is case sensitive. Uh, so, for example, if you have a line like without having maze, which is called B73, if we have B73, it's going to show up. But if we have non capital B, it's not going to show up. So keep that in mind. Another thing is that we have the wildcard, which is this um, asterisk. And that is uh, normally assumed to be in the last part of the string, but it's useful if you say, okay, I know that the line or the individual has a something, something, seven, something. So you can say seven, something, uh, something, seven, something, which is what this reads. And you can see that all the lines that have that particular uh, pattern show up. If you say it has something like with in between brackets it has something either seven or six all the things that are followed by that have either seven or six are followed by any string are going to be selected and you say oh yeah so I want a a619 and a6 so you can use shift or uh, command depending on your uh, operating system to select uh, several of them and you're like oh yeah so three three one six that one too so again just like sites you click in add and then you can select those or everyone bought those. Uh, so that's another option that we have in Tassel for filtering. Uh, we can also filter by values uh, of uh, 
for instance, proportion of sites present. So if there is too much missing data and you don't want to write down the, uh, the name of the individuals, you can just filter based on that. And also if uh, you had inbred lines and something is highly heterozygous and you want to filter that out, you can use uh, these values as input here. Uh, in general, you want to write down those values, the ones that you use for uh, filtering so that you can replicate your results. So please, please do that. Uh, and then there's some uh, options for filtering traits. And uh, here we can change the data type. Uh, for example, let's say you have a trait like flowering time, and you have a trait like uh, disease, and you know that flowering time affects disease, so you maybe want to take that trait and use it as a covariate, or here, ear height. Let's say you want to use ear height as covariate, so you say, okay, change selected type to covariate, and then now it's a covariate. So, um, you can also include or exclude different uh, traits, and uh, you can also do this, uh, maybe something was actually data, and uh, you want to go back from type to data, so you can also do that. And that's it for filtering. The next video is going to be GWAS, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching.